Hi, my name's Rob Sherwood, CTO at Big Switch Networks, and I'm going to show you today our new product, Big Cloud Fabric, what it looks like unboxed. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how easy it is to deploy, administer, and debug. Specifically, I'm going to show you the product's basic operations, including deploying the physical topology, the initial controller configuration with zero-touch networking, how to set up tenants and policy, and then finish with the all-important automated debugging features. The first step is to order bare metal switches, available from a number of vendors. As you can see here, each leaf switch has 48 10 gig ports down to the server connections and 6 40 gig ports up to the spines. The spine switches are nearly identical to the leaves, except that they have 32 40 gig ports. Note that we call these switches bare metal switches and not white box switches because they actually can have brand name as well as commodity switch components, anything from our hardware compatibility list. Also, the term white box is further inaccurate because as you can see here, the boxes are not actually white. The first generation of the Big Cloud Fabric software supports 16 redundantly connected racks in a pod, which supports about 750 servers at a 2 to 1 bandwidth oversubscription rate. For each rack, we deploy two active-active multipath L2, L3 leaf switches. We then connect the leaves together with two backup links for an extra level of redundancy. We then connect each dual home server to both leaves using LACP or other lag technology. We then pick a rack, usually the middle rack is easiest, to rack up the spine switches and the two redundant big switch controllers. We then plug each leaf into each spine, creating a high bandwidth, multi-path, fully active active network that does not use spanning tree. Last, using multiple connections for ba additional bandwidth and resiliency, we connect the desired number of leaf ports to one or more egress routers to reach traditional networks as well as the rest of the world. Popping back up to see the big picture, now we have a redundantly connected active active multipath L2 L3 leaf spine topology. Next, let's configure the controllers. After you set up the IP address of the first controller, configure the second controller to join it as a single logical cluster. Once the cluster is formed, the two controllers form a highly available redundant pair which transparently and continuously synchronizes configurational and operational state. At this point, power on all of the switches. They will automatically boot from the controller using Big Switch's zero touch network protocol and receive their relevant configuration and operational state directly from the controller. This process runs continuously in the background so that you never have to log into each switch individually or manage the switch configurations by hand. Next, using LLDP and LACP, the controller automatically discovers both the leaf and spine topology as well as the server links. Once the switches are up, log into the GUI and assign each switch a role, leaf or spine, by MAC address. Big Cloud Fabric also ships with a more traditional command line interface that exposes the same configuration and operational features as the GUI. The GUI and CLI are front ends to the controller's public REST API. This means that all commands are available from both the GUI and the CLI, as well as for custom scripting, including DevOps and OSSBS integration. The REST API is a first class interface to the Big Cloud Fabric system and is how we integrate with OpenStack. Next, I'll talk about creating tenants and logical routing. Visualize your compute nodes as a fungible pool of resources. Big Cloud Fabric groups these resources by application or by tenant for isolation or for ease of administration. Completely independent of physical location, end hosts can be placed into L2 logical segments, and then segments can be connected via logical routers. Each logical router is its own isolated VRF domain, so by default, they have their own sets of routes, policies, and services. Each logical router can be connected to the root system router as an intertenant policy point. Each tenant has their own private logical router. Every device in the network is both an L2 switch and an L3 router. This means that whether the traffic between two endpoints is either switched or routed depends only on policy and not topology. Each logical router is distributed through the fabric and is not tied to any single device or switch. This means that the routed interface, that is the dot one address of the router, logically exists on every pair of switches in the pod. This means there's no single L3 points of failure, bottlenecks, or hairpins. From the graphical interface, creating tenants, segments, and logical routes is easy. 
Imagine we're deploying a three-tier web application where we'd like to isolate this application from other things in the system. To do this, we can treat each application like a tenant so that its policies, routes, and IP addresses are all self-contained. First, we create a tenant for the application. Let's call it green. And then we can create three segments for it for its web, app, and DB tiers. Then we can assign end hosts and VMs anywhere in the network uh, to this tenants and the various tiers. We can assign them by physical port, by VLAN, or by other attributes. We can then create the corresponding logical router interface so that each for each segment, so there's L2 forwarding within a segment and L3 logical routing between segments. By default, there's full connectivity within a tenant and no connectivity between tenants. Next, let's add some policy to the system to make it more realistic. Our policy-centric application lets us treat all of the endpoints in the same segment as a single policy group, or an endpoint group, as some are calling it. This allows us to assign inter-segment policy upfront and be done. This means that the group memberships can change dynamically, that is, as workloads change, we can add and remove virtual machines and physical machines to the application, but we don't have to rechange the corresponding policy or recertify the system security. Here I'm going to create a policy that says that only the, traf the only traffic from the web tier can accept from the outside world is on port 80. Note that as the membership of the green tier gets updated over time, the controller dynamically reapplies the policy to all of the web tier members. In other words, the day-to-day -day security op operations are dramatically simplified by decoupling the policy from the physical location of the nodes. Last, data center networks can be quite complicated. Let me show you some of our automated debugging features. One of the first steps in debugging most application problems is finding out if the endpoints are actually successfully connected to the network. With our centralized view, the controller has complete information as to which endpoints are connected to which physical switches, as well as their corresponding MAC and IP addresses. Similarly, other problems are easy to solve with a single logically centralized view. For example, there's a single page which shows all the link status notifications. Additionally, there's an easy to understand dashboard that shows you per tenant counters and per segment counters to show you which tenants and segments are using the most resources. We've also included a feature called test path for automated debugging. That is, we can ask the controller to test a path or simulate a packet lookup against the policy and tell us hypothetically what would happen. We use the same logic to instrument the data plane to tell us how many packets of a certain class are following this path. Working together, these tools dramatically reduce the operational complexity of debugging complex multi-op networks. Thanks for sitting through this unboxing of our Big Cloud Fabric product. In future videos, we'll be demonstrating our seamless link, switch, and controller recovery features, more on our support for NFV, as well as our hit list live upgrade process. Please stay tuned for future videos and thank you again.